Cars.com Auto Review. Hi, I'm Dave Thomas of Cars.com, and this is a 2013 Porsche Boxer. This is actually the second time Porsche's overhauled the Roadster since it debuted back in the 90s. Ah, remember the 90s? Such a simpler time. People actually paid for music. They had to watch TV commercials. And if they bought a Porsche, they had to get a 911. So when the Boxer came out, no one thought anyone would buy it. Fast forward two decades later, people are buying Porsche SUVs, Porsche four doors, and they're going to want to check out the new Boxster. The base Boxster we have here has a new 2.7 liter flat six engine, and it's pretty quick. It has 265 horsepower, and Porsche says it hits 60 miles an hour in 5.5 seconds. It's a little faster than that if you get the optional PDK transmission instead of the manual we have here, but I love the six-speed manual. It is the perfect example of why the Boxer is so desirable. It's simple and executed flawlessly. The clutch is not too heavy, it's not too light, the shifter goes into its gates exactly as you'd expect, and you feel one with this car the second you get in the driver's seat. I was pretty happy with the power in this base Boxster, but other editors, they found it slow. There is a more powerful Boxster S, which has a larger 3.4 liter flat six engine. It puts out 315 horsepower this year, and Porsche says it'll hit 60 miles an hour in under five seconds. Steering and handling are remarkable, as you might expect in a mid-engine car. I also experimented with the adjustable suspension and sports settings, and they all seem to do their jobs as stated. No matter what setting you had it on, the ride wasn't that jarring. This Boxster is also a little wider than before, making it feel even more bulletproof on tight turns. I recently drove a Mercedes new SLK, which granted isn't supposed to be as performance oriented as a Boxster, but there is no question of which one was better on the road. One benefit of a soft top like this Boxster versus a retractable hard top, that top goes up and down really fast. I clocked it at 9 and 10 seconds most times, and that's great when you're at a stoplight. Top-down driving at highway speeds isn't quite as pleasant as a 911 Cabriolet. I tested that last week. I know, it's, it's a tough job, but with the top up, the Boxer is really quiet. You're not giving anything up to those retractable hard tops like the SLK or BMW Z4. One negative of the old Boxer was the interior didn't really hold up to the price tag. Well, that's changed too for 2013. Inside the new Boxer, it's a lot like the new 911, which is to say it's really nice. Now, it might not have the same high-end stitching or leather on the dashboard and some other parts, but overall, it's a really nice cabin. It also gets a similar center console to what you see in the 911 Panamera Cayenne, and you get a new digital gauge in the gauge cluster. Like most Porsches, one problem with the Boxster is its price tag. And it starts at $50,000, which isn't that bad compared to something like Mercedes SLK 350, which is about $5,000 more to start. But once you add some simple options that most buyers are going to want, the price tag goes up quickly. This is our sticker, the test car we have here, which has some nice high-end things that everyone might not get. I mean, the wheels alone cost almost $5,000. Not everyone might get that, but you just want navigation, infotainment system. Uh, that's going to be uh, $45.60. Uh, premium package, $4,360. And that has the heated leather seats in the premium package. You just paid $4,300 for it. You want the ventilated seats? That's extra. That's another $730? Yeah, so you don't even get cooled seats. Those are extra. All told, our test car, $75,000. So if you want a Boxster, and I kind of do, you better figure out which options you're going to mark off. For more car-related news, go to cars.com or our blog, kickingtires.net.